he's out on the porch. I'm not in my office, obviously, so he's he's barking at me, wants me to come back. Uh, I want to tell you a story of my own. I've spent two and a half years telling everyone else's story, but uh, namely because I don't really have anything interesting to tell you about me. I just live an average life. However, uh, the last two nights, something has happened that is blowing my mind and you might find it interesting. But let me start by giving you some background. I'll tell you this is not Bigfoot related at all. But I'll give you some background and I'll just start at the beginning and where I think this all originated. I was five years old living in Memphis, Tennessee with my parents. It was a warm summer afternoon or evening. My parents were next door talking to uh, the next door neighbors. And it was a great night. All the kids were running around. All we had were shorts on. Nobody wore shoes or shirts. Or, and we just had a, we're just having an average wild summer night. We're running around the driveway. They had a station wagon, the, the neighbors did. And the tailgate was down. And I got this great idea that I would start diving into the back of the station wagon. It wasn't very high. And I made it a couple of times, and on the third or fourth try, I launched a bit too soon and ran my face right into the tailgate of the station wagon. And I split my lip from almost to my nose all the way down. My lip was just laid open, so I had to go to the hospital. Go to the hospital, and at five years old, I'm terrified of needles and smells of hospitals and doctor's offices and I'm fighting them with everything I've got to keep them from sticking me with that local anesthetic that they give you before you get sewed up. I, I was a strong little kid and they couldn't they couldn't hold me down so three nurses pinned me down and I remember one nurse saying we're going to play cowboys and Indians and we're going to tie you up. Uh, there was no psychology behind all this stuff back then. It was more like, let's get this kid strapped down, sew him up, move on to the next patient. And I understand all that. So they strapped me from my ankles, knees, waist, chest, put restraints on each side of my head, and strapped my forehead down. They gave me the shot, deadened my lip, sewed me up, and I went home. And that being tied down, and uh, to me it felt like torture. Uh, but I was fine when we got home. I remember going home, even at five years old. Uh, I was fine. I was telling everybody, calling my grandparents and telling all my buddies, I got sewed up. Not long after that, I began having night terrors. And I always attributed these night terrors to this event of getting strapped down and my lip sewed up. And in the nightmare that was always consistent with these night terrors. I am at my grandparents' house uh, with all my cousins, like we always did through the summer and even the winter, sleeping on a pallet on her living room floor on the old rug she had there. She'd lay a blanket down and put pillows out. We'd all sleep there and I'm there in my dream. And a huge rock, or stone is on my chest and I can't move. I can't move my arms. I can't move my head. And I can see up to the top of the stone. And over the stone pops a figure, a face. And it is the face of a character in a TV series that was popular in the late 50s and 60s. I don't know the exact years that it was out, but the show was called Kukula Fran and Ollie. Some of the people my age and older probably remember that show. Uh, I'll put a picture of the creature or the creepy little puppet here that I used to see in that dream. Uh, and it is a creepy little character. Even I look at it today and I'm like, good grief, that is so weird. But this puppet was... Uh, had his face over the rock and he's laughing at me and he's talking to me but I can't hear him I know he's talking because his mouth is moving then I see uh, opposite that hand another hand come over the top of the rock and then an arm and then a shoulder 
and a figure pops its head up. And it's a gray figure with bony hands and dark black fingernails. And this thing has a teardrop shape to its head. And it has big black eyes, just like the pictures you see. And it's striped like a tiger, but the stripes are black, which kind of make it, looks like it's camouflaged. And the stripes are running a vertical or long ways with whatever limb, his face, they were streaked down. I see this thing look over the top and uh, it starts to come over the rock. And at that point, I uh, used the dream stops. And I would wake up in, from that dream in night terrors. Night, if you don't know what night terrors are, they are, uh, uh, you, you can Google it. It's a little small episode that kids go through with real deep dreams. You can't wake them up. And my, I don't remember the night terrors, but I know I had them and I remember this dream. But my mother has told me several times of weird things I would do and they could not wake me up. So I always attributed those nightmares to that episode when I was uh, five getting my lips sewed up. And I had this nightmare, the exact same nightmare, a hundred times from the time I was probably five and a half or six until I was 16, 17 years old. And then other things got on my mind and I matured, I became an adult, got married, started raising a family. And I didn't have that dream for all those years, 40 something years, until two nights ago. My wife went out of town uh, Monday or Tuesday, this is Friday. So I've been here with the dogs, just having a great time and working and, uh, you know, just the things you do when you're a bachelor, when your wife's away. And we've been playing out in the woods and going on bike rides. And so I'll come in and read a book for a while. Then I'll watch a TV show and go to bed. And the night before last, I woke, I had this dream. And in the dream, I, I can't believe I'm having the dream. It's like I realize in the dream that I'm having this dream I haven't had for all those years. And I wake up not in a night terror state. I think I wake up. And I'll look around there's no moon out and the room is dark it's just black but even in all that blackness I can see a figure standing in the doorway of my bedroom and I see its arm up against the wall and I look at this thing and I'm thinking am I awake or am I dreaming and the next thing I know it's like there's a couple of minutes where I, I don't remember anything and I'm walking through my house with a firearm and I'm checking the house. The dogs are not alarmed at all. We have three dogs that stay in the house and three, two dogs that stay in a washroom. They have beds and all and uh, they're comfortable. But uh, I've got this firearm in my hand. I'm like, what? What in the world? So I'll come back to bed, put the pistol away and get back in the bed and I fall back asleep and I slept great woke up the next day and I thought about making this video yesterday but I wanted to see if I had that dream again last night and I did I had the exact same dream the Kukla Fran and our Ollie crazy weird creatures looking over the rock there's a bony hand that comes over I see a shoulder this head emerges it's all it's exactly the same but this time I wake up and there's nothing in the bedroom. There's nothing. I, I actually got up and looked around. Now the previous night, I don't know if I was still dreaming when I think I saw something in my house. But probably was. I was just probably still dreaming or half dreaming and half awake. But isn't that crazy that from the time I'm, let's say, 16 years old, I'm 58, I'll be 59 this summer. I've not had that dream one time. A dream that caused great night terrors, great anxiety in my life. Sometimes I would be afraid to go to sleep because I, I didn't want to have that dream again, but I would have it. I, I had the dream a hundred times. Not one time through the years have I had that dream until the last two nights. I'm not worried about it. 
it doesn't bother me. I don't I, I look forward to going to bed every night. I, we have a real comfortable bed. I love laying down in it and getting relaxed and going to sleep. Uh, last night, when I anticipated maybe having that dream again, I wasn't worried at all. I'm still not worried. Some people might say it's demonic. I don't... Uh, I'm not going to argue that point with anyone, but I'm not worried about demons. I belong to the creator of the universe. There's no demon on the planet or in hell or in any realm that can touch me. Uh the uh, extraterrestrial thing that's what's got me thinking that maybe I was visited or have been visited through the years by an ET and uh, I, I don't know I, I really don't know I have no way to prove it no I'm not going to go through hypnosis because it's not that big of an event in my life uh, it's just the natural thing that kids go through but it's so strange to have that dream all these years later thought I would share it with you guys and thanks for hanging with me for this uh, different kind of video. And we'll see you guys in the next one. And I wonder what's gonna come of me